The Surprising Truth About Rejection. In this video, you'll learn how to deal with rejection, especially when your clients say no, or when you're trying to apply a strategy to your clients, and they're like, mm, I don't think so. No. No? <laughs> <laughs> So what is rejection? So what it means is when someone comes to you and asks you for advice, especially in your coaching space, and you're trying to apply your specific strategy in their specific problems, and they go, whoa, I don't think that's a really good idea. No! And then you feel rejected, and you're wondering why your client didn't apply the strategies so I had a recent client that was part of my coaching program and what happened was that she came on to me as a life coach. Even though I teach marketing, but she came to me as a life coach because she liked my whole branding of becoming a lion when we are little kitty cats and I turn people into marketing lions and she liked the concept of becoming a lion. So she came to me um, thinking that you know I could help her brand herself but most important how do I change her mentality and <clears throat> I did this process called timeline therapy so look it up in this text box over here what timeline therapy is what timeline therapy is it's an NLP process where it takes a person into their timeline into their internal space and travels them back into time to uncover past traumatic experiences or past memories that have been locked down and stuck in their past timeline which is stopping them from moving forward so what happened was in her business she was constantly feeling stuck so there was nothing wrong with her business she was traveling on really fine she was moving from one job to another she got a pay rise she got the perfect boss she got the perfect environment everything was fine it's just that in her life things were quite roller coaster emotional so what I mean by that so something would happen on that day and she would take it out of context so for example she would go to work and her boss would empower her with an opportunity to make decisions at work but what then what happens is she'll go home and take that out of context and then get really angry at herself and the reason behind that was that she didn't trust herself she didn't trust that she could lead that team she started feeling contempt why is her boss giving her this trust when in her previous roles she wasn't given this trust so there's a lot of self-esteem issue so the way I compounded that was to apply timeline therapy of course what is this going to do with rejection stay watching this video and I will make it really clear because what happened was I applied timeline therapy on her and she didn't take it so well oh no 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 oh no 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 so what happened was with timeline therapy as a coach is that you put them in this timeline space where you get them to close their eyes and take them back in time. So I took her back to many times and the emotion that we were trying to deal with was anger. So I took her back in time and we dealt with different stages of her life that she felt angry. And I asked her many questions, what did you learn? from those experiences. How could we reframe it in a way that she finds new meaning in these events that could basically resolve those events and apply a new learning, a new meaning. So a more positive meaning rather than a negative meaning. And when we can release this negative meaning, then it will release out of her life. And what happens is if, for example, she found that she learned anger when she was five, if she could resolve that meaning and apply a positive meaning, there will be a domino effect that if anger were resolved when she was five, it will have a domino effect. It goes and then that will lead on to where she's right now, where she would not take things out of context and become angry or frustrated at a situation that was not meant to make her angry. So what happened was I helped her do this NLP process called timeline therapy. And at the end of it, she pulled out and said, she was uncomfortable even though she consented to doing that with me and I feel so much rapport as her coach I've taken her so long in this journey and this is the only time I felt it was appropriate to do timeline therapy with her and what happened was I felt this sense of rejection because it didn't work on her 
because I've done timeline therapy with other students of mine before and it all worked. I've done to literally five other students prior to doing it with her and it all worked. They found fantastic release of their emotions. So this leads down to the video I'm doing today, how to deal with rejection and the actual truth about rejection. So what happened was when I tried to do timeline therapy for my client, what happened was when it didn't work, it actually was a process for me to reflect because when it didn't work on her, I actually felt guilty, I actually felt bad, and I actually felt that I put her in an uncomfortable situation. And even though she trusted me at the end of our session, which she hasn't done before, she actually hung up on me. It's the mind boggling, eye popping. Oh no, what happens when your client hangs up on you? And what happened was, that was a process for me to uncover my own limiting beliefs. The fact that, why was I feeling rejected? Why was I feeling kind of guilty? And why was I feeling bad because I wasn't likable? And that made me uncover three important things about rejection. Number one, when you feel like you need to be a likable coach. Sometimes we'll give our clients likable content. Sometimes likable content might not be good content for our client. A likable teachings are things that are very fluffy and sugar-coated and they have a marvelous session. And as the weeks go by, like this client that I had, she had all these turbulent emotions. It was because I was giving her likable coaching. Sometimes there are room for hard, tough love coaching, which as a coach, you need to be able to deliver that because you want to serve your clients and you want to get them results. Number two is when I felt rejected when she hung out on the phone call, I took it out of context. I took it as a way that she doesn't want to deal with me anymore. And sometimes we need to ask ourselves as a coach, when we're having a session with our client, it's not about you. It's about how you're serving this client. And sometimes the way your client acts, it doesn't mean that, that is them as a human being. It doesn't mean they're bad. It just means currently their programming is the way they deal with things. So when things are confronted in their face, when you're giving them unlikable content that will grow them, that's the way they escape. They either hang up on you or they run away. It doesn't mean it's a reflection on your ability. It's basically how they respond to that situation. And that's the reason why they're stuck in life and that's why they need you. Number three is choosing to believe in our client's stories. What do I mean by that? I'm talking about certainty. When you believe what you're doing is serving your client, even your client clangs up on you or rejects you or doesn't want to talk to you for a couple of days, it doesn't mean you need to buy their story. And if you're buying their story, it means it's triggering your own limiting mindset on the way you're dealing with this situation. So to take this back into concept, when my client decided to hang up on me, I've taken on to the fact that she doesn't want to talk to me anymore, I've hurt her and she's moved on or maybe I'll lose her as a client. So that is a choice that I've decided to take. I've taken on to the idea that because she's done that, it means that she's fully rejected me and I feel rejected and therefore she doesn't want my help anymore. But that is not serving me or serving my client and in this case, I felt it was a blessing that this has happened because it's helped me reframe a new mindset towards rejection. So what do I mean by that? So how I talk about right now is instead of thinking that she's rejected me or rejected my coaching or that she has no hope in hell to achieve anything, what I should think is she hasn't rejected me but the proper reframe is she's in the process of being certain. Let me repeat that, she hasn't rejected me or your friend or client hasn't rejected you, what's actually happening is that they're in a process of finding certainty. This is a very perfect metaphor that I've used for myself. Just imagine that when you're trying to teach someone a new teaching and an unlikable content, an unlikable teaching that will serve them, it's like you're trying to give someone a big file to download. Imagine the file you want them to download is three gigs. Then you want them to download this file called certainty, having certainty in life. 
rather than having doubt in life. And you want to try to get your client to download it. And currently, instead of thinking your client is actually rejecting that file, actually your client's trying to download that file as we speak. It's just that number one, they have really low bandwidth, they're probably on like 2G or maybe 3G, whilst you're operating on 4 or 5G. Or another thing could be they click pause on the download. Maybe they're not ready for the file, but it doesn't mean they've canceled the file. They're actually in the process of downloading the file. Number three is probably they don't have the storage base. So they're trying to download three gigs of certainty from you, but they've only got two gigs. So in terms of an analogy to Dropbox, they're only using a basic package. So what that means is Dropbox only offers two gigs of basic package. You cannot download a three gig file into a two gig storage space online. So that's what's actually happening. Number one, she's trying to download the file but has very low bandwidth. Number two, she's chosen to click pause because she doesn't feel like she's ready for the file. And number three, she wants to download the file and she's ready for the file and she doesn't mind with the bandwidth that's slowing her down, she's ready for it, but she doesn't have the storage space to take that on. So by applying this new reframe that I've learned from this whole situation with my client, is you will learn to don't see rejection as a final state. You see it as a process of transferring certainty onto her. It's just that this beginning phase of you transferring certainty on her, she's decided to put it on pause, or she's suffering from some buffering issues that's stopping her from downloading the file. So all in all, this is the surprising truth about rejection. Rejection isn't about the service level of your client rejecting you. Rejection is actually a blessing for you to reflect what other areas in your life since when you were born to now that you felt rejected because when you feel rejected it's obviously something in your past that you've been rejected before or you felt and added meaning towards that context that you haven't learnt yet so by going back in time and really uncovering all those lessons like the way I did by viewing rejection as a file being transferred and that my client has chosen to pause the file, it doesn't stop me from trying to still serve her. What that means is I'm not gonna close the connection on my end, I'll still be uploading the file to her and I'll still have a server that still stores this file available to her when she wants to download it. So I really hope this video serves you well in the surprising truth about rejection, especially if you're coaching your clients, especially if you have a friend that you're giving unlikable content, because sometimes trying to be likable doesn't really serve your client. We can't always sugarcoat certain truths that we want to tell our friends, family, or colleagues, or even our most important, our clients. Catch ya.